All right, so check this out. This is a 2006 Toyota Highlander. We're gonna change out the CV axle. Let me go ahead and show you why we're gonna replace the CV axle. It's because that boot is spilling uh, lubricant all over the inside, and over time, you'll probably hear the click, click, click. Let's go ahead and see how fast it's gonna take us to replace this, and uh, let me show you some tools, but let's go ahead and start the stopwatch real quick. Uh, but go ahead and check out the video right over there, which is showing you with the GoPro attached to the other side while driving, how that axle is actually performing and why it needs to be replaced. All right, go ahead and check the video out. While you're watching the video, I'll start the stopwatch here. Okay, Google, start stopwatch. Sorry, stopwatch is not yet supported. There we go, we're gonna go ahead and start the stopwatch and we're gonna see how long it takes while doing a video. Here we go. So we're gonna need the jack, jack stands, gloves, maybe a rag, a giant bar to take off the lug nuts. There's a breaker bar in case we need that. That's to take off the lugs in a fast fashion. There's a replacement, new CV drive axle. I think I got that for about 50 bucks. I'll put the links in the description below. Click the link below. Rubber mallet, regular mallet, we got some uh, brake cleaner just in case we get grease on the rotor. Penetrant, uh, rust loosening chemicals. We got the bungee cords to uh, pull back the rotor. Uh, pry bars and all sorts of other tools here, so we'll go ahead and use those. Definitely want the, the torque so we can get the right torque on all these bolts uh, that require it. We also got a punch here. We're gonna use that to get that axle nut off. So, all right, let's see how long this takes. First, the alloy wheels, so this actually comes off by getting into the backside, by taking it off, then punching it out, and then we gotta put the wheel back on, but I wanna see if I can actually just get this off without doing it, so. So it almost wants to come, but it's not going to, is it? Let's stop doing that, because I spent a long time doing these wheels, as you guys know. So let's go ahead and take the wheel completely off, pop that out, put the wheel back on. So if we go under the car right there, I think that's a good spot right there and I might as well just go ahead and don my gloves because it's just easier with the hands better grip we're not gonna bring it up all the way we want the wheels to stay on the ground because that'll allow us to get the lugs off so there's still a connection to the ground there now we're gonna use the uh, lug bar put on a giant pipe there that'll give us the leverage that we need And if it's ever too hard, pushing down on the bar is much easier. Okay, we'll crank it up off the ground. Yep, e-brake is engaged. Now we have clearance. So this wheel should come off pretty easily. And then on the back side here, right on the back side, we just popped out that cap. Okay? And now we can actually see what we're working with here since but we already know what's going on. I don't know where my wheel's going. So there's our axle right there. It's going into the transmission there. We're gonna follow it out, and it goes into the wheel here. That's all coming out of that boot. See, it's splattered up against the wall there. We need to get this nut off. It's been punched in, so we have to deal with that. So we have a couple of tools here. We really wouldn't want to get a screwdriver actually stuck in the crevice and have to drive that out. And we don't want to damage the threads here because this will be harder to get off. So this punch actually may be able to get in there. So that's not gonna work. Okay, spray some rust penetrant on there to loosen that up. Then we'll get the wheel back on and then we'll try to crank it off. Yeah, I think it's gonna be this 30 millimeter that'll work. Yep. So we'll just use this breaker bar to get it off, but we have to get the wheel back on because this is just gonna spin freely, okay? Okay, and then we'll lower this back down. When the wheel touches the ground, we'll be able to put maximum force. Probably should have done this prior to, but let's put some of this on there. Hopefully it doesn't damage the wheel, which it shouldn't. Oh, 
there we go. It's moving. If this was actually going to be any harder, I would have put the, the tube on the uh, back end of this for a little bit more. Or I would have let the penetrant actually work its way or put it in a different location, the penetrant. So I can feel a little bit of friction here because of that indentation there. But it is going relatively well. And instead of wasting all this elbow grease, I might be able to find an adapter to use my impact wrench. Okay, so we're going to raise the vehicle back up. I'm going to put these jack stands. I'm going to just raise up the jack stand. Okay, we're going to go slow. Okay, and then we'll just pump this up just a little bit so the jack stand isn't taking everything. So we've got three points of jack support. And we'll just continue to take that nut off almost all the way, okay? So now if that's actually going to be spinning on us, we may be able to take a tool here and prevent the spin from occurring. And allow us to take this all the way off here. So this nut is almost off. So now you want to spray these three, uh, the nuts and the bolt, with uh, the rust penetrant. Apply some top to bottom, let it do its work, get something to eat, come back, it should be easy peasy lemon squeezy. With all the messing around, we're at uh, about 30 minutes, we'll resume. Now I want to show you that this is not going to give us a lot of torque right there. I do have an extension here, so let's let's run this scenario. So say I just have like a deep socket there. That actually might work. So it, that's impossible to move right there. So let's go ahead and use our long bar technique. Just slide it onto the end. So now we've got this all this to work with. We want to go lefty loosey. We want to keep this at a perfect right angle so we don't round off the bolts. And I'm going to use my knee right here. And we'll just, and I'll use my hands to keep it nice and stable and straight. And look, it's almost too easy. Yeah, there we go. Nice and loose. Let's get this last one. We got three of them. This is a lower control arm. Hey, when you're done with this, you can say, hey, got my exercise for the day. Exercise. But we'll take these all the way off. So this is what we're taking apart right there. So watch as I take this off. See that? Sliding right down through that hole right there. And so this is a bolt and these are two nuts. Set these to the side. And usually you want to do it in some sort of way so you know which goes where, but I believe they're exactly the same. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pry this control arm. Okay, let's see. Okay, so now that's, that's separated there, so we can go ahead and get that nut to come off and then pull it back. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our nut here. Okay, perfect. That's removed. Yeah, I need, I need this to go in. So we look right here. If you look right here, there's some play here. And so what I need to do is I need to drive, drive force in here to separate from the grooves that are surrounding this assembly from there, okay? It's not gonna work, I need a heavier hammer. I think there was one over here. Oh, that's not much heavier. Spray a little bit in there. Perfect. 
Okay, so now that's free and clear of this unit here. So now we need to disconnect it from over there at the transmission. We need to find a good leverage point. So we don't want to go too far. We don't want to ruin the seal here. And this is where people get frustrated and make mistakes. We just want it out. All right, here's what happened. I had to swap out the memory card, got filled up. I'm at about an hour, a lot of farting around. What I'm having a problem with is detaching the joint from the transmission. That's because I really have to get into this crevice area and just give it a pop, but I don't have a lot of space, so I'm gonna actually jack everything up so I can get that leverage that I need. And I'm really just gonna get in there. I'm gonna avoid damaging the seal, but I'm really gonna get in there. I'm gonna give it a good pop. Let's, oh, shit. We'll zoom back in right there. And there we go. There we go. And that's probably because I have the car up so high. It's an absolute mess. You see that? It's all from the transmission. Looks like I'll need to top that off once I get that axle back in. It's the name of the game sometimes. Freaking bloodbath there. Okay. There we go. That is our axle. Looks like everything's intact. I just need to uh, put back in the new axle, which we'll get out here in a second. So let's open this box and see what we get. So there's our new axle. We got an axle nut here. I will just install it in reverse order. So I'll try to do that as fast as I can because the battery's about to run out. But I also want to be very careful. So we're going to do it into the transmission first. Make sure all these splines line up and make sure we don't damage the seal around there. Okay, I've actually bungee corded this. We're going to get the axle lined up. Okay, so that looks like the snap ring is in place. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bend this around. Fit it in there. Okay. Uh. Okay, and so we just spun the rotor a little bit. And that looks like it's sliding in just fine there. And KRVM FM Pendleton, KLB. Okay, so now we've got that protruding um, as much as we need it. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the, the nut on. We're just gonna do it a few, a few turns there. Just so everything's stable, we're gonna put that control the arm back on, connect that all up. Okay, that was done by hand. It's rough though. So I think when we get the nuts on, that should flatten out. And we can get that bolt in there. 
And now we need to uh, torque everything down to 55 pounds per square inch using this uh, torque wrench here. Okay, and that's what it's gonna look like. 55 foot pounds. And we'll lock this off. Now I need to go get an adapter so I can go from half inch to what I have. Ooh, saved. Got the adapter from half inch to whatever that is, three eighths? Mm. All right. Let's go ahead and torque this down. Okay. That's 55 pounds torque down per square inch on all three. Okay, so we'll get this all the way on here. <laughs> what? So what are they using? They're not using a 30, they're using something a little bit different. So this is gonna be 30, just like that, see? This is not 30. There's a little bit of play in here, but it looks like I'm able to use a, a one and a fourth. There's a little bit of play. That should be fine. That should be fine. But we want to use the nut that was designed for these threads. I want to want a cross thread. See how smooth that went on? So I'm going to ratchet it on there first. Okay, I'm gonna clean all this off. I'm not sure what grease actually got on here. So this is actually gonna to be torqued to 217 foot-pounds. Ooh, actually this torque wrench doesn't go to 217. Let me put the wheel back on and then get this torque down. It goes to like 150. Okay, so that'll that'll have to do until I can get this retorqued. And I'm gonna go a little extra beyond uh, using the breaker bar just so we can get above and beyond. I think too much is better than not enough as long as we don't go too far. Something like that, it feels good. I was at 150, put quite a bit more force on it. We're gonna lift it up, we're gonna punch it, we're gonna stick the cap in, we're gonna be done, okay? Okay, that looks pretty good. Now it's not sliding anywhere. We're gonna put our oh, center cap back on. We're done, minus the transmission fluid. Let's go ahead and put all this on. And let's go ahead and torque these wheels down appropriately to 76. So we'll unlock it down there at the bottom. We'll slide it back until we see 75 roughly. Slide that on, we'll let the wheel touch the ground. Actually pull these jack stands out of the way. Okay, what's the last thing we need to do? Center cap. You ready? This is it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this transmission fluid in and fill it up. I'm gonna pull the car back out and you'll actually see how much we lost.
or at fidelity.com slash wealth. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC. Since the Federal Communications Commission is shut down. That's a bloodbath, okay? <laughs> That's a freaking bloodbath. We're gonna clean all this up. We're gonna get the transmission fluid back in there to the proper levels, and we're good to go. Saving you 200 bucks, costing you a whole lot of time. Let's check out that stopwatch. It's an uh, hour and 50 minutes, okay? But that's with filming everything. This is gonna take me a little more time for the uh, transmission fluid. And that's most likely because I had the car jacked up and the fluid uh, ran back. Uh, had I had it come straight up with the hydraulic, I think I would have lost minimal because it would have sat in the front of the transmission and that would have been fine and good to go. So everybody, Garth Vapor, tutorials, saving you money, Highlander 2006. Subscribe, like, comment, and share. Let's open this bad boy up and see what's inside. Here. This is the part that goes into the transmission. There's that snap ring, which we had some issues with. Uh, this goes into the wheel drum assembly. This boot looks okay. It's this boot where we get all this uh, debris coming out. So let's see where it comes from. Because the boot's not cracked. Yeah, the boot looks fine. So it looks like it was perhaps coming through this section here. Let's go ahead and cut this open and see what we find. And as we pull away, you can see how this assembly works. And so to sit here and try to refurbish any of this would be very time consuming. Uh, all we really needed to do was reboot it, that's my guess and make sure the fluid isn't there. But at 50 bucks, it's almost a no-brainer to, uh, to just replace it. There you go, that's the inside of the CV axle.